Bam! Greetings all, Last Outrider here, with another installment of Who Are The Death Watch. This time, Watch Stations. While watch fortresses are relatively scarce, there are far more of the smaller facilities known as watch stations. These are often no larger than a small escort ship, and some are little more than a rock creep bunker situated upon a lonely mountaintop. Watch stations are located so as to provide watch against a specific threat or to guard a particular location. They may have been placed centuries ago, perhaps on the world of a mystic's prophecy or an especially auspicious reading of the Emperor's Tarot, or it might be that a great enemy was defeated at that location and its possible return is being guarded against. As with watch fortresses, watch stations can take many forms. A great many are silent sentinels in orbit around a world, while others are lonely towers standing guard over a long dead battlefield. Watch stations provide facilities for little more than a single kill team, and the Battle Brothers are scarcely stationed on one for any great length of time. The resources of the Death Watch are too scarce for every such station to be permanently staffed. Instead, watch stations may be used as a staging point should a threat become apparent. And to this end, they are always stocked with vast reserves of ammunition, arms, and equipment. While they are not always manned by battle brothers, many watch stations are home to a skeleton crew of sensor techs and watch serfs. These servants live out their entire lives performing their duty, ever watchful for the threat of the alien and ready to call upon their masters should such an event occur. Many of these serfs have lived and died and never met a single battle brother. Yet all are indoctrinated and conditioned into their duty and watch never tires. A great many watch stations are not crewed by men at all, but are controlled by machine spirits. It is only by the blessings of the very highest of acolytes of the machine god that this is possible, for such devices can be entrusted are very rare indeed. Orbiting many a dead world might be found, by one who knows where to look, a silent mechanical picket, its glass eyes scrutinizing the surface far below, its transmitters trained upon distant relay stations. The primary task of any watch station is to gather information and to pass this back to the watch fortress. The nature of the information may be detailed activity logs compiled by watch serfs, or at the other extreme, it may be the constant chatter of raw machine language beamed in a never ending transmission across the void. The most important watch stations are attended by an astropath, but others rely instead on regular visits for their reports to be collected. In many cases, 
It is not a sudden and disturbing report of alien activity that draws the attention of the Death Watch, but the absence of any report at all. Standard doctrine dictates that any unexpected silence must be investigated immediately and a kill team dispatched to forestall possible alien attack. And now a short story. Quarantined Worlds. There are some worlds in the galaxy that are known to harbor life forms so dangerous or vile that the Imperium has imposed a quarantine upon them, that none may set foot upon the surface. Many of these are classified as death worlds, planets that teem with life forms so predatory that even the most seasoned and well-equipped explorer is likely to be slain within minutes of disembarking his lander. Other quarantined worlds might harbor the remains of long extinct alien civilizations and be host to thousands of sealed tombs within which lie relics too dangerous to be allowed to fall into the wrong hands. Some worlds harbor microscopic life so deadly that to simply breathe the air would cause one to die horribly within minutes. Many of these worlds are guarded by lonely watch stations, but there are simply too many of them across the galaxy for all of them to be watched over in this way. Around these are placed beacons warning any approaching spacecraft that to trespass further is to invite the retribution of the Inquisition. Those foolish enough to ignore these warnings rarely survive whatever it is the beacons are warning against, but their identities are logged nonetheless so that the Inquisition might hunt down any survivors and punish them for their crime. Many are the bands of outcasts, rebels, and pirates that have somehow survived the perils of a death world, only to be hunted down and slain by a death watch kill team. Next time, Death Watch Recruitment. Until then, bye-bye.